Today marks one year since Rishi Sunak became Conservative Party leader. He certainly had a turbulent 365 days, hasn't he? We're joined now by Conservative MP Greg Smith and also Labour MP Steve McCabe to give their assessment. So, Greg, I'll start with you. What has Rishi Sunak achieved in the last 365 days? Uh, good morning. Well, I think, first of all, as you said yourself, it's been a, a turbulent time. And I think politics has stabilised a, a little bit. Events always take over and uh, curveballs are thrown. But I think politics has stabilised far more than it had been for the years that, that preceded that, through the pandemic, through you know, going back to 2019, the parliamentary gridlock that led to the 2019 general election. And in the last year, I think that politics has stabilised. And I think the Prime Minister is now, having bedded in in that time, started to announce things that are going to really resonate in time with the British public, the more sensible, pragmatic approach to net zero, uh, seeing sense on HS2. You know, it still needs to go the whole way and get rid of phase one, but seeing sense on that and actually delivering things, particularly for the Midlands and the North, that are going to actually improve people's lives. We need to see more of that coming uh, out of Downing Street and particularly something uh, around the cost of living, around the tax burden uh, that we're asking people to pay at the moment. That needs to come down. Steve McKay, Greb Smith there, pointing to some policy changes that we've seen, particularly in the last few months. He's describing a better direction from the country. Uh, I'm guessing you disagree with that. Well, I think the Prime Minister is possibly doing his best, but uh, he is a prisoner to factions in his own party. It's kind of obvious that he's not really in control and that policy has been made by little factions within the, the Tory party at the moment. It's utterly reactive politics and they don't have a grip at all. Um, and, and, of course, his own position over something like the the farce of not being able to find the phone for the COVID inquiry does call into question his own integrity. Steve, um, just another question to you. Rishi Sunak's five priorities, halving inflation, growing the economy, reducing debt, cutting NHS waiting lists and stopping the boats. Same priorities as Keir Starmer on paper. Uh, well, there, there are some uh, similarities. I suppose the difference is that uh, Keir didn't create these problems and he hasn't set impossible deadlines with which to deal with them. Uh, and we would approach all of them differently. Greg, same question to you. Is it not the case that there just isn't much difference these days between what the Labour Party is offering and what the Conservative Party is offering? I think there is a, a fundamental difference, that it's actually the Conservative government that are trying to grapple with many of the problems, you know, many of which were actually thrown up by the COVID pandemic, by the backlogs that came about because of that, because of the sheer scale of government debt that was taken on in order to pay people's wages through furlough and the business grants, etc., that has created you know, the lion's share of our economic problems. I think it's the Conservatives that can actually grapple that that can, if necessary, on the small boats issue, face down at the legal establishment. And if there needs to be a plan B, if the Supreme Court goes against us, take the measures that will be necessary to disapply parts of the ECHR. In some ways, I hope it doesn't have to come to that level of row, but there will be clear blue water between us and the Labour Party because I'm confident it's the Conservatives that will actually face those problems down. Well, voters certainly need a choice. Steve McCabe seems to have, uh, have, have, have gone, disappeared, vanished. But thank you very much to Steve McCabe, Labour MP, and, of course, Conservative MP Greg Smith. There.